Welcome back to the class, everyone. Just a couple of weeks ago, we refreshed our video for the top 10 core teams in game, where the whole point of that was to go in and look at what teams should we be working on towards the beginning of the game that will not only bolster your roster, but will set you up for success because all those teams were resource oriented, where not only when you finished them did you have a nice team, but you're actually able to go and get more Kyrotech or Zetas or whatever it was from another area of the game. And while we were ecstatic with how that ended up, it did leave us with one question, and that was, what do we do next? So that is going to be the overall purpose for this video. And while we're not really trying to make one giant farming plan, we are trying to give some guidance as to what we should be doing after we finish or get close to finishing those top 10 teams. So as we had our rules for the core teams, we're also going to have some rules for the semi core teams that they need to follow. The first off, we're still not doing any pure Chirotech teams. And the reason why is because while I love Inquisitors and Bad Batch, the amount of time that you're gonna sink into them just because of the Chirotech is going to keep you not away from maybe one other team, but likely two or three other teams that each need two or one character that have Chirotech. So really, when we're still trying to build teams quickly and build out our base even wider than the top 10, we wanna stay away from those teams that are doing it to the fullest extent. The second rule that we're gonna follow is we're gonna be aiming for more of an end game farm setup. While in the last video, we focused a lot on teams that would set us up for normal legendaries, one of the emphasis in this video is gonna be setting us up for a lot of the Galactic Legends and or the Galactic Legend ships like Profundity, Leviathan, and Executor. We're also gonna be looking for cheap PVP solutions. This is going to differ a lot from the last video because in the last video, we were really aiming for those juicy resource investment oriented teams that could beat assault battles. Well, we mostly ran out of assault, assault battles. So now we're gonna be trying to aim for resources from both a TW and a GAC perspective. And that is where we're gonna be looking at some alternatives that will be able to get teams built quickly. And then lastly, no conquest characters, because you might have them by this point and you probably do have a few, but at the same time, we need to present alternatives that don't require people to be farming a character for like 18 months if they didn't show up for conquest in time. So with that being said, getting this out of the way, let's actually talk about those teams. So first up is going to be the Admiral Radis team. And I've got to say, I think this is one of the most underrated offense teams out there. For a while, it was only accessible to the people at the very end game. That's not not true anymore but when we were at the very end game it could only beat two or three or four teams out there but if you're in the mid game holy crap does this always beat something for you on offense one of the reasons why it's so great offensively is because of how it's worked into Admiral Radis's kit, I can't remember if it's under his leadership or his unique, it's probably his unique, is that Jin can't be defeated while he is still alive and the AI wasn't in on the secret so what will happen a lot of the times when you go to use this on offense is they will just sit there and they will beat up on Jin again and again and again and again because she is naturally a weaker character and most of the AI out there is programmed to go after the easy kill they can't really get away with that because Adrad won't let her die and that buys you enough time to be able to use the hope ability that he gets through his granted ability and just completely annihilate the enemy team. It works great against a lot of the Empire teams like Aiden or even DTMG when he doesn't have his Datacron, very important on that last remark, or even an Emperor Palpatine team that doesn't already have Star Killers so that you can immediately stop the days and nuke them. And even besides that, it beats some other stuff too. It beats Tuscans. It has quite a lengthy roster of teams it beats. And not only that, you need almost the entirety of the team to go after profundity. We have added K2SO in here. He He's not the magical best fifth. He's the one that I like the most because I think it's a great crossover. He does end up getting used in Cassian's ship, and then he has some direct synergy with Cassian as well, which again, you need Cassian at R8 for Profundity, so you might as well do the two. But I'm not I'm not tied at the hip to him. If you want to use Baze, use Baze. That's fine. Next up is going to be the Sith Empire team. Now, we are going to be talking a little, about, a lit, a little bit about the variation without Malgus. 
But if you do have Malgus, you know, just throw him in his lead and pretty much all the same things apply. But even without Malgus, this team is pretty good. It has lost a little bit of defensive GAC viability due to Imperial Troopers, assuming that they are actually going to be able to be faster than Darth Revan, which isn't terribly hard if they have Gideon and really good speed mods. But if you're consistently fighting people who have worse mods than you, then you have a pretty good shot at leaving this on defense or even using it on offense. It still kills a lot of important stuff. One of the things that they put into Darth Revan's leadership was the ability to put death mark on the enemy leader. This has been very important for a lot of matches out there, particularly even what we've seen with Dark Trooper Moff Gideon right now on defense, who is a, a lot of people aren't facing him, I realize that, but at the same time, it's a very end game team and he's just kind of completely destroying it because of the fear mechanics as well as the death mark and uh, everything else this team is doing. Not to mention Malik himself, which if you have Malik, you pretty much have the team by now is useful in a variety of game modes. We actually talked about him quite a bit when we redid our recent Sith video. He's very universally useful when it comes to different things like conquests or galactic challenges and whatnot. Next up is going to be the Darth Treya team, really kind of finishing out a lot of those mid-tier Sith teams. And it's weird to say mid-tier, but I guess Bane and Lord Vader and C exist. But overall, just a great PvP team. You should have Darth Rhea completely farmed up by now. Darth Nihilus, Darth Sion, and Talon are all hard-known characters that you can have farmed up. Savage is very accessible. And then with the two Omicrons, a little bit more expensive than we're typically used to when it comes to these type of videos, but still overall great value and a team that is really tough to beat in the beginning mid and even the end game. It just gives a ton of problems. The other thing that I do want to mention is in our last video, when we talked about core teams, we really made a point to talk about all the assault battles one of the things that wasn't directly mentioned was we didn't give an answer for the sith slash first order assault battle we had one for the night sisters we had one for the imperial troopers we had one for the jedi we had one for the rebels but we did not directly address the one with sith by the time you are done with the core teams and the semi-core teams up to this point you will have all the Sith necessary to easily two-star the last challenge and maybe even three-star if you're really dedicated and want to move around mods and have like really high relics or maybe you, even if you've got C on the side at some point but by that time having Darth Malak having Darth Nihilus having Palpatine's leadership you should be able to piecemeal together a team that can take that out at the higher level while it might be a little bit tedious it at least is a solution that doesn't require you to have a galactic legend next up we're going to move into some cheap PvP teams, which again, overall is fairly decent value now that we've made sure all that our resource-oriented teams have been covered. And the one we're going to talk about right now is going to be Phoenix. Phoenix is great. Uh, biggest caveat of all time, you have to have Com Captain Rex. He doesn't necessarily have to be at Relic 7. You can use him at Gear 11. You can use him at Relic 3. You can use him at Relic 5. You might even be able to use him at Gear 9, depending on the squad you're using him against, whether it be offense or defense. Overall, just great team. Very accessible. The only character here who is not entirely accelerated, I believe he's not currently accelerated, is going to be Captain Rex. And he's also the only character on the team that does... Re yeah, he's not. It, it requires Kyrotech, so again, an even bigger um, punch up in his direction, allowing them to do things in GAC against, for example, Inquisitors when they don't have doubt. And even Hera, even Hera's Omicron, for those of you who really like TW out there, it's not that bad when you compare with, with the what the team can do overall on offense. Next up is going to be Iden Versio, a team that is not nearly as good as Phoenix in TW, but still very good in GAC, and she really does meet the requirement of being accessible and the reason why and this is different from a lot of the teams on this list and it isn't clearly seen here but Iden versio with gear 12 troopers will wreck a lot of teams still in gac her omicron adds a ton to what they are able to do they get 35 percent health protection just for free and they're constantly recovering that already bolstered health and protection whenever an enemy attacks out of turn which happens constantly with so many teams especially if you're taking this team to use it on offense you don't have to worry about your opponent out thinking it by using Wampa or something like that you can just pick and choose which team on the enemy's squad like Mon Mothma is already setting you up for success because that's all they literally do is attack out of turn next up is going to be the uh, Finn Zori team I was a little hesitant about putting this team on here at first because really in my mind this is just the team you get for free when you get Ray. And it is that, but I think it's worth mentioning here because it's very similar to the Phoenix team where these four characters right here, oh, actually a Risen Zero Finn might require a little Chirotech, but these three characters right here don't require any Chirotech at all. They're all accelerated. 
now and you can use them even without the GAC Omicron and get a lot of value and it does get you one really big leg uh, in the door or foot in the door to getting that Galactic Legend Ray character and even maybe even using JTR in another one of these teams to overall get more value. Next up is going to be Wampa. This one feels a little bit silly to talk about because we already talked about Jedi Knight Luke in the previous video, but let's say you didn't have enough Omicrons to go around or Relic Materials to spare or good mods. This is the time to do it. I realize he's pretty much only good in GAC outside of some weird scenarios, but if you already had him because of Giant Luke, you really should get him up the rest of the way, just for fun's sake. He still beats quite a few teams out there. He's very fun. He does fall off at the end game, which is quite unfortunate for myself, but for a lot of people out there, the biggest thing is he's a one character team. You don't have to gear up five other characters. And for a lot of people, you already need him at Relic 3 for Giant Luke to begin with. So overall, just some pretty good value. Next up, we're going to focus on, again, some of the end game requirements that we have and some good teams that we can build out of the, those requirements. First up is going to be this odd Dash team. You can replace Bam with Dash for the leadership just because he functions very well with IG-11 putting out dots out there pretty consistently with the turn meter and whatnot that happens that way. By the way, this is not the most ideal version of this team. In fact, this is not the team that I use given the gear 12 IG 11 but it's a team you can use and if you do use it every single one of these characters in here is required for a larger farm whether it be star killer Afra, Bo, or even, I guess, Beskar Armor Mando himself. I personally prefer to put L3 and Vandor in here. However, that's two whole other farms that you would have to do that don't really present any other value because they don't lead up and into any other anything else, but you still can use them on the team. But overall, this right here will get you pretty good results and, again, isn't overall as expensive as some of the other ones are. Next up is going to be the Mon Mothma team. Really not a great team, but you pretty much get this whole thing for free if you're working towards other teams. Mod Mothma is required for both Profundity and Jedi Master Luke. Uh, Biggs as well as Wedge are also required for Jedi Master Luke. Car required for Bam. All teams that we previously talked about, we've talked about the requirements. Throwing them in, probably just finishing a lot of those farms from Jedi Master Luke to as well as Starkiller. And ultimately, this is what we're trying to lead up to here. And not that Starkiller is the end all be all for all teams, but I think from a roster building perspective, this is really setting ourselves up for success because we essentially get this bottom team if we do all of these other things for free. You got Kyle Katarn to go with Mon Mothma. You got Dash to go with Bam. You got uh, Mara Jade to go with Emperor Palpatine in the last scenario. You got Darth Talon to go with Treya. If you have those four characters and you have them at Relic 5, you get Starkiller. So now not only have, do you have all these cheaper PvP teams, but on top of that, you have a team that is both amazing in GAC as well as Territory Wars. Now you do have to apply the Juhani Kron to our to Juhani. Uh, if you want to be able to use Starkiller well in Territory Wars, but even if you don't and you just want to use them in GAC, get Starkiller, throw his base unique Omicron on, and call it a day. So that is going to really wrap up what we're going for in our semi-core video here. I do want to evolve this later on into a overall farming plan that we can work towards. I feel like the core teams in this video is a really good base, and we're starting to move into some larger farms like Starkiller. And I think JML is in here somewhere too. We just need a cross nose to see what other farms we need to finish to be able to get there. But let me know what you guys think, what you think we should do. And as always, thank you for watching and stay awesome.